Now, hold on, hold on, before you get your torches and pitchforks out. I absolutely adore Xenoblade. I mean, if I didn't, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel all about it. But even with that said, Xenoblade isn't a perfect game. And with that being the case, the games have a few flaws. And some of them just really get under my skin. Which is why I'm going to be talking about eight of them today. But following up with this video, I will be making an eight things I love about Xenoblade. So click in the top right 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 about now and that'll take you to that video once it's been uploaded but with that all out of the way let's jump right into the video we're gonna start off today's video talking about this little lady Ursula from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 I quite like her actually she's a nice little character and like some other people on YouTube I don't hate berry or polar bears and want the polar ice caps to melt but even though I like her as a character I do have to say she has one freaking annoying side quest Quest. Now I will be honest, this wasn't as bad for me as other people considering the fact that I got Ursula just before Mithra awakened, meaning that I could start a side quest fairly early on. But considering the fact that some people would have got Ursula as their last ever blade and would have then been faced with a 24 hour in real time side quest. Now this is the worst example that there is in any Xenoblade game, but all Xenoblade games have got very long long and tedious side quests. Stop monolith, please. I enjoy side quests as much as the next person, but there's no need for some of the really annoying and long ones. And sticking on the topic of side quests, my personal least favourite style are the side quests that require collectibles. However, not all of these are made equally. Some of them are honestly fine and things that you'll just do when generally playing through the game. But when I have to skip travel, take a five minute walk to the one location that spawns a particular item and it's not there and I have to repeat that over and over and over again, it gets a little bit annoying. The only exception I'm willing to give out is for the love source plant in Tantal for Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because that's more for dedicated 100%ing players or just general side quests where I have to keep spawning, going through the menus, trying my luck to get a particular item and never obtaining it is very annoying and from my experience and with my luck this tends to be almost every collection side quest. If I honestly didn't have the Xenoblade wiki as a shortcut on my PC, I don't think I would have finished any Xenoblade game. Some of the locations and enemies are so obscure that you need to grind for that it just makes everything a pain in the arse. So for the next Xenoblade game, please bring back trading from Xenoblade Chronicles 1. That made it at least a little bit more manageable. Not good, but manageable. And let's just finish hating on side quests, shall we? For new players, the worst type of quests. Timed quests. Monoliths have had the foresight to remove these from Xenoblade Chronicles X and then brought them back into Xenoblade Chronicles 2. However, only three of them. Please don't do it. It's so annoying to not be able to traverse back to old areas, obtain items we've missed and do those particular side quests. The amount of times that I've needed something from Maconis for a video, but I'm literally at the end of the game so I'd have to play through it all to get back there is so annoying. Just don't lock out areas. Change them if you want. Exploring a broken Maconis would be amazing, but don't lock us out of the areas, especially if there's quests there, and especially if there's unique weapons and items. I will be honest though, I'm not too upset that we can't ever go back to Windol, because there's really not that much to do there in the first place. The Maconis, on the other hand, Monolith Soft gets a frowny face from me for that one. Let's stop hating though on the side quests and start hating on something else. One of the good things about Xenoblade is that they're very good at making diverse worlds and that's why they helped out making the world design for Breath of the Wild 2. Unfortunately though they don't always get it right as in my opinion in every Xenoblade game there's an area which isn't 
very good. Xenoblade Chronicles 1, how about we have a look at the Bionis interior? That beauty of world design where everything is super confusing of which way you need to go and you have to have your map open permanently. Xenoblade Chronicles X would be Kaldros. Imagine having your skill die in Kaldros and have to get all the way back without a skill and the ability to fly, especially when your Wii U gamepad screen is broken. And Xenoblade Chronicles 2 gets a hard pass from me from Tantal. Seriously, it takes me five minutes to look for the area I'm trying to fast travel to, and then another five minutes to traverse there. It's ginormous and horrible to navigate. I will remember you can't fast travel or pause whilst you're falling, so if you fall off Tantal, just wait the 10-15 seconds until you hit the floor. To be honest, I don't really mind a lot of the other areas, but according to a lot of other people on the internet, a lot of people dislike the Ether Mines, Valak Mountain, Coldros, and even more. So even though it might be beautiful to look at, it's not very navigatable, especially when you have to grind an item like in my previous points. And on the topic of things that are poorly designed, there are undoubtedly some poorly designed and extremely annoying characters in the Xenoblade series, such as Tatsu, the useless Nopon that literally does nothing and is there for comedic relief but isn't funny. The funny side of Tatsu's interactions of when you're preparing meals are all provided by Lin. That's not Tatsu being funny, that's just Tatsu being even more of a useless and annoying character. There's a good few blades in Xenoblade who are very annoying, but I'm not going to go very much in depth with the blades of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because you can watch that here in my top five favorite and least favorite blade Xenoblade video, which should explain everything there that I'd need to here. But to give Xenoblade Chronicles 1 the benefit of the doubt, I can't think of one character that's even disliked in that game, let alone someone that's hated and annoying and useless and doesn't ever do anything. Oh yeah. Juju. I think the first time that I played the game, after meeting Juju, I had nightmares of this man, and it still happens to this day. Look what happens when I close my eyes. See what I mean? Try getting to sleep with that in your ear every night. Oh, but Juju helps rebuild Colony 6. Yeah, helps in terms of standing in front of the building after you've collected all the materials and then the screen fades to black. Presumably as you do all of the work and he stands there doing nothing. I don't blame Zanza for setting those armies on him. In fact, he would have been doing all of us a huge favor. Now let's talk about one aspect of the combat that I've never really enjoyed. Spikes. Why do they need to exist? They make everything much more difficult, but it's not a fun challenge. Because oh yes, if I hit the enemy like I'm supposed to to win, I take a good percentage of my own health away at the same time, because that makes sense. Now to be honest, if it was only damage spikes, it wouldn't be too bad. And this is why spikes are kind of manageable in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But when I have to keep in mind about topple spikes, regular spikes, and area of effect spikes, and that some of the spikes will topple me, some of them will daze me, some of them will just cause instant death and I'm going into the menu every five minutes to change the gem so that the spike doesn't do as much as it should do. And I'm having to have a guide handy the entire time to know if any enemy's got a topple spike or what to expect in the battle. It's not particularly fun. This honestly wouldn't be so bad if you knew what to expect before you went into it. So Xenoblade Chronicles DE does this okay. Still doesn't warn you about topple spikes, which is super infuriating, but as far as as I'm concerned, spikes can just be removed from the game and make it harder in different ways. The most annoying thing about spikes, I think, as well, is that they do loads of damage for the enemies, but when you apply an aura or have gems to do a spike, they do literally nothing. Spikes don't need to be in the game. End of. Next, we're going to go a little bit more isolated, because this only occurs in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, thank you god, but it's the 
stupid skill checks and field skills. I believe I've already mentioned this before in my which Xenoblade should you play first video, which you can watch here, but these are just so annoying. It is very much possible to get stuck at certain areas because you've either got very unlucky with the rare blades that you have pulled and the field skills that you've summoned on your common blades. In theory, you could soft lock yourself in the game where the only way to progress is to literally grind core crystals until you get a blade which has the field skill that you require. What the actual hell? This to a certain extent happened to me just before entering the old factory in Moradain and thank you god that I had like 30 rare core crystals and got lucky and got exactly what I needed. And I've mentioned it before but once you've done it once it should just automatically be completed but please monolith don't add this into the next Xenoblade game I beg. And now finally the final thing that I hate about Xenoblade is some of the freaking reviews these games get. Everyone from now on will always remember the infamous IGN Definitive Edition review for how absolutely terrible it is. And Anel made a video a while ago on some of the other terrible Xenoblade series reviews. There's never anything wrong with disliking a game. Not every game is for everybody. But when people, especially big review companies, haven't taken the time to invest and look into the game and get an actual opinion of it, and just send some random intern to write a random review about a game, it gets pretty damn annoying. And unfortunately, it's not just review channels, because I tend to see a lot of it on Reddit as well. And so that tiny, extremely minor thing is one of the things that I hate about the Xenoblade series. I hope you've not taken this video as my declaration of war against Xenoblade, because with all this said, it was very difficult for me to even think of eight things that I didn't like about the series, which I think should go to show everybody exactly exactly how amazing the series is. But there's always room for improvement and so hopefully I won't need to make one of these videos again once the next Xenoblade game comes out. I'm pretty confident I won't need to anyway. But I appreciate you all watching and hope you've all enjoyed. If you've enjoyed my few little rants of a few things which I'm not particularly fond of in terms of with Xenoblade then hit the red subscription button so you don't miss out on the eight things I love about Xenoblade which will be coming shortly afterwards. And if you're enjoying all of this Xenoblade content, then that's just another reason to hit that big red button. But until next time, guys, peace.